Hey friends, Melly here. Look, the following parable is a simple but powerful story that tends to stick in your head. Its, it's lesson is one of those ones that will pop into your head and guide you in those moments when you need it the most. And hey, look, we all need this story because it points out a common failing we can all be really prone to falling into, especially these days. Here's the story. Once upon a time, an elderly man became too frail to live on his own, so he went to live with his son, his daughter-in-law, and his four-year-old grandson. The old man's hands were shaky, his eyesight was blurred, and he was unsteady on his feet. Each day, the family ate together at the table, but the grandfather's trembling hands and failing sight made eating really difficult. Peas rolled off his spoon onto the floor. Milk spilled as he trembled his hands. The son and daughter-in-law who had busy lives and were often tired by dinner time, became more and more frustrated and irritated with his mess. We've got so much on our plate, the son said one day. We've got to do something about grandfather as he's just creating more work and hassle for us. He said, I've had enough of the spilled milk, the noisy eating and the food on the floor. So the husband and wife came up with a plan. They set a small table in the corner and there the grandfather ate alone every day while the rest of the family enjoyed dinner together. Now, since the grandfather had broken a dish or two, his food was now served in a wooden bowl. When the family glanced in the grandfather's direction, sometimes he had a tear in his eyes as he sat alone. But still the only words the overworked and irritated couple had for him were sharp criticisms when he dropped a fork or spilt some food. The four-year-old watched all of this in silence. One evening before supper, supper, the father noticed his son playing with some wood scraps on the floor and he asked the child very sweetly, hey honey, what are you, what are you making there? And just as sweetly, the boy responded, oh, I'm making a little bowl for you and mama to eat your food in when I grow up. The four-year-old then smiled and went back to work. Well, the words struck the parents so deeply that they were speechless and then tears began to stream down their cheeks. Though no words were spoken between them, they both had the realisation that they were teaching their son indifference and harshness instead of kindness and compassion, which were their true values. Well, that evening, the husband took the grandfather's hand gently and led him back to the family table. And for the remainder of his days, he ate every meal with the family And neither the husband or wife seemed to care any longer if the fork was dropped, the milk was spilled, or the tablecloth soiled. The next day, the couple decided to simplify their lives a little so they had the time to focus on family, on love, and what really mattered most. Now, each one of us can probably relate to this story. There are times when we all behave like those parents did and we choose convenience over compassion. There are times when we're harsh or impatient because we're too busy to listen, to be kind, to be patient. And there are times when it's just too inconvenient to live our values. So we take actions that give us instant gratification, but often lead in the long term to disharmony or suffering. Now, the art of mindful living involves a conscious effort to live a life that's true to us, a life that's in alignment with our values And maybe a true test of how mindful a person is, is how they act when nobody's looking or when the only one who's looking is our grandparents or the checkout lady, our partner, the janitor or our children. Are there ways that you've been overlooking what matters most in your life? If so, what could you do today to change things? And hey, just one final thought on this story. We don't need to judge ourselves harshly when we find ourselves off course. It's part of being human. Mindfulness is not a perfection project. It's not about being flawless. We can be compassionate with ourselves when we make mistakes along the way. And then like the parents in this story, we can then renew our intention to live with more compassion, more awareness, more authenticity, and with our inner compass set to true north. If you want to know more about identifying your values, there is a three-part series on my website and there's also a free seven-day course on mindful living. It's all there at mrsmindfulness.com and in the links below. All the best.